guys? It's your boy Ivan with another video. Listen, a lot of people have been asking me, how on earth are you able to be a full-time entrepreneur, leave your job and still pay your bills and do the things you wanna do? Listen, it was not an easy thing, right? A lot of people know I left my job in 2017. Um, I was a classroom teacher for six years and uh, I just didn't like it, you know? I mean, it was an exciting field to go in because I taught music, I taught band. I mean, it was fun because I had a chance to interact with kids and expose them to things they some of them have never expo been exposed to in their lives. So much politics and education, and honestly, after talking to a lot of my teacher friends, they're still there, but the only thing about it is the difference between me and some of my other coworkers, some of my other friends and some people like that, some of them don't have, don't have, um, some of the things that I'm gonna talk about in today's video. This video is gonna really talk about five things that you have to do, or five, let's say, five steps to being a full-time entrepreneur. So the first step is pretty self-explanatory. You have to have a side hustle. Like when I was teaching, um, I was never really exposed to entrepreneurship, even, or no one's really ever told me or exposed me to being able to earn money outside of your nine to five. Granted, you know, I was introduced to a lot of those um, um, network marketing programs, which I'm not um, endorsing or talking negatively of. I think a lot of people, if that works for them, and when I say that, I'm referencing those businesses like Amway Global, Herbalife, um, there are a lot of them. You know, there's nothing wrong with those businesses. I think they have um, um, a market for those who are interested in, 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 in doing those things, and that's for them. But for me, that didn't kind of work well with me. So as a result of that, I kind of lost interest in trying to learn how to make money outside of going to work. So I had a side hustle. My side hustle was literally creating things, and um, it was started as just designs, you know? Um, I did a few designs for a few people. Wasn't really print anything, because I didn't know how, <laughs> you know? So I did a lot of... Um, um, did a lot of uh, research and tried to uh, find the most inexpensive way to print a high quality shirt because I'm like, hey, people are asking me to design these things. Why am I not able to print it, you know? Um, hey, that can be some extra money, you know? And so um, when I first started, I was doing, I was outsourcing uh, my t-shirts. Uh, so people would have me to design something and they would say, can we get them printed? I say, sure, you know, I mean, to them, they probably thought I was printing them, but at the time, I wasn't. So I went to a company called 3B Printing right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, Moore and Willie are the owners. They were literally uh, opened their arms to me just to learn the business, learn how this works, learn um, the ins and outs, even as they were... Um, being my supplier in regard to my shirts, they, you know, taught me where the wholesale places were, how to price my shirts so that I can get a profit and they get a profit. And, you know, so um, you have to have a side hustle, whatever that side hustle is. I had several co-workers who had little side hustle things. Some people were doing jewelry. Some people were doing real estate. Whatever that side hustle is, you need to make sure that you just... Um, do as much as you can while you're working. Get your uh, salary from your nine to five. You know, make sure your bills are being paid, but while you're doing that, educate yourself. Make sure that you, you know, know as much as you can and, and ask as many questions to people who in your industry are, are, are doing the things in the industry that you want to um, one day soon be a full entrepreneur in. But the second step is you have to do research. Let me tell you guys, I attended Alabama a University and I got a degree in music education. I have no experience <laughs> in running a business. And at the time, I had no experience in running a business. I had no idea, you know, where do I go to set up this LLC? What in the hell is an LLC? What, you know, what can I, what I have to do about my finances? How does this work? Well, I, how would I, I had no idea. So I had to do research on how to even start a business, you know? So it's so many people who are out here and they say they're the owner of this, they're the owner of that, and they're not even registered with the damn state, all right? Each state has a um, Secretary of State website where you can go to register your business, and it's a fee that you have to pay annually, and you have to reserve your name and all that stuff. Like, it's a, it's a process, you know? One, you have to even make sure that what you're doing, will it sell? Will you be able to sustain clientele even if you do it as a, as a side hustle, you know, is it something where you're actually um, going, is it, is it going to be worth you even investing time into when you do get off work? You know what I mean? It's something you have to pay attention to. Now, a lot of people say, you know, anytime you start a business, you have to do something 
new that isn't done before. I disagree. I believe that there are a lot of industries where everyone is almost doing the same thing, but it's all about the experience that you're giving your customers. For example, um, hairstylists, barbers. There are millions of hairstylists and barbers around, the, around this world, but what makes it different is the experience that each client gets per person. You know, some people may be going to their barber for specifically because they're cheap. Some people will pay $40 and $50 every week because they know their barber's gonna hook them up and not mess them up and have them looking good, their hairstylists as well. So don't be afraid to do something just because it's already being done. Because there's always a way to change stuff and add new features to something that's already been here for 20 and 30 years. Another example, t-shirts. Like, people have been doing t-shirts for years, man. Come on now. Like, but I feel that, you know, me making videos like this, me educating my clients, because I really believe that, you know, people uh, miss out on opportunities when it comes to business. Um, with t-shirts specifically because we're not aware of the process, which is why I'm always making videos showing how I print this, how this screen is made, how what the process is. Because a lot of people, you know, I understand the goal is just to go based on who's the cheapest. But at the same time, you know, even if you don't go with me, I want you to know why I'm charging what I'm charging, what we have to do. A lot of people message me like, wow, I had no idea you had to do all of that just to make some shirts. It will make you rethink um, questioning or negotiating whatever the prices are. Because at the end of the day, the business owner knows what their pricing is for, what it's going to pay, and how much profit they're going to make. That's the end of the day. At, at the end of the day, the goal is to make a profit. We're not volunteering. At least I'm not volunteering. Maybe they volunteer. I'm not volunteering. My goal is to make some money so that I can do some other things and put some other money aside so that I can do some other things and put some more money aside. Anyway, you have to do your research, people. It is so important. That's the part that so many people miss out. They try to over, they try to go over that part. They try to just dive straight into the product or service, whatever they're offering, and not do research. You gotta do research. I promise you guys, if you do intense research and, and find a mentor, find somebody on social media who, who's doing the same thing that you're trying to do. Try to get as much information from them. You know, there are a lot of people out here who are, you know, they don't want to give information because they feel like you're going to outshine them. Go to the next person. There was a lot of people in the t-shirt industry who was giving me little by little and didn't want to give me the piece of the pie by giving me the knowledge. You know what I mean? I feel like it's billions of dollars, millions of dollars, billions of dollars for all of us to make out here. So there's no reason to kind of keep that information. But anyway, at any rate, um, find somebody, find a mentor and get that information. You got to do the research. Third step is that you have to have a plan. You cannot go on social media telling these people, I have a business, today I launched, have my grand opening, having my this, having my that, and you don't even know what's going to happen if it fails or if you're successful at this grand opening or whatever way you come out. You have to lay out at least two or three months in advance so that you'll have an idea, so you won't be surprised. Because usually, and this is what I did when I first started, I did, I had one order, <laughs> it was a family reunion order, right? And so it was about, I think it was like 60 or 70 shirts. So I did these shirts and so I was like, all right, I got these shirts going, they came out well, you know what I mean? I just assumed somebody was gonna call me the next day about some shirts. And I was sitting there looking crazy because I'm like, oh, I didn't plan. Oh, I didn't lay out what was gonna happen after this order. I was just so excited about that one order because that was my first big order in my in my mind. That was my first big order. I thought I was getting it. I thought I was on it, you know what I mean? It was a lack of planning, you know? And coming from being a teacher, like that's all we do. We have to plan. So I, I, I felt ashamed a little bit by missing that step, but hey, you know, you have to make mistakes in order to actually grow. So you have to have a plan. Please lay it out. Even if you don't, you don't have to have this extreme detail word for word, just have an outline. You know, just have an outline of what you think could happen if this, and, and base it off of scenarios. If this order comes through, what happened? What would have happened if that person decided, oh, I'm just gonna go with somebody else. Do I have a backup order? Do I have somebody else already lined up? Like you have to have that layout. You have to think two or three months in advance. And as you grow, you start to think per year, like next year, the year after that, what's gonna happen? And that's what makes businesses grow. The fourth tip, save your money. So when I was teaching, I educated myself 
and save my money in the midst in the midst of that. So while I was teaching, when I got my, my paycheck, I would put some money aside. I would invest in um, things that would help me. Some some online courses that I kind of did, some um, classes that I went to, um, some material that I just ended up purchasing. I had no idea what the heck I was doing when I got it, but I just wanted to get it because I felt that it was going to help me in the future in some form or fashion. And I just got it. You got to save your money and, and invest your money correctly because I promise you if you just try to go if you just try to wing it it's not gonna work it's gonna be real tough for you to try to stay afloat or keep some type of consistency I mean granted money is what you need to start a business so it's like if you if, if there's no true budget to the marketing true budget for the um, uh, materials and supplies to make whatever you're trying to make you know I mean you you have to have it laid out you have to have it laid out it kind of goes back to the plan a little bit but saving your money is, is is a really intense thing because you know a lot of people don't they get excited about an idea and they don't think about the money aspect of it it is so important to put your money aside use that time while you're in your job right now regardless of what your income is people do what they want to do with the money that they make, regardless of the income. I promise you, if you just focus on, you know, that goal that you want to reach with your business, money is needed to start a business. You will not be able to operate a business without any money. Just make sure you guys have some money. The last step, step five, you have to know your audience. So for me, I knew I was printing t-shirts, and I'll be honest with you, I was just kind of going for whoever. Whoever needed some shirts printed, holla at your boy, you know what I mean? It was kind of a vague audience because it wasn't ne really narrowed down. But the moment I narrowed down to my specific audience, it made things flow a little easier. So as of right now, when I do my print, when I'm printing my custom T-shirts, my three I have three audiences: schools, uh, organizations, or groups, and businesses. I literally target those three because it helps me organize exactly who I'm gonna contact in regard to an email or an Instagram um, um, DM to, to try to get business. Like those are my three categories. So on one day, I'm working on sending emails to about 100 schools. On the next day, I'm looking up businesses in the local area and beyond that require some type of apparel, even if they're, you know, like a law firm. A lot of these law firms and different other companies where they have to dress up or to work or whatever, they have parades and, 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 and business fun and um, business picnics and things like that that they do on their like off season, I guess you can say, that they need shirts for. They may not need it at that particular moment. You have to think outside the box. They may not need, they may not wear shirts, you know, day to day at their, in their industry, but everyone needs shirts. Everyone's a part of events. And I had to think about that when I was um, um, organizing all of this because you have to lay it out so that it'll, it'll be um, structured in a way where people, will be, where you will be able to easily organize it. Because if you just say whoever needs some shirt, if I just said whoever just whoever needs some shirts come my way, it's like, they're coming from every angle and there's really no structure to it. You must know your audience. Find the, the group of people. You have to do a Venn diagram. That's the three circles, where it's one circle, one circle, and, and a circle in the middle. And the goal is to see what the characteristics, who, what are the characteristics of your clients? Who do you, do you want people who, do you think you're gonna make people, make money solely off people who are in a wealthy bracket? Those who are, you know, in a, um, more low income urban uh, um, bracket? Are you gonna make money from both groups? Like you have to find a way to narrow down that audience because that's the only way you're gonna make you're gonna make money in your business. You have to be proactive with that, knowing that regardless of what item or service you're giving, you have to know who you're trying to sell this stuff to. You feel what I'm saying? I hope you guys really enjoy uh, my five steps. Um, I just kind of thought about to do this video because like I said, a lot of people have been asking me about doing something like this. Um, and I hope you guys learn something from it. So I hope you guys have an amazing day. Make sure you guys share this video with um, your friends, people who you may know, people who you may not even know. If they want to be a full-time entrepreneur, they need to see this video. All right.